Hello friends, in this lecture, we continue our discussion on quantum free electrons and sommerfeld theory. Let us briefly revise what we have done so far. So we have solved time independent Schrodinger equation for free particle in a cubic box. And then we have found the eigenfunctions in this form exponential i k dot r where k is the wave vector. Now we applied periodic boundary conditions and that gave us this discrete or quantized k values where kx is equals to 2 pi nx pi l and so on. Here nx, ny, nz these are integers. Now using this discrete or quantized k values, we constructed a 3D k space with allowed values of kx, ky and kz. The volume occupied by each of these discrete points is given by delta k is equals to 8 pi q divided by p. Then we fill the energy levels and then we found that the fill filling of energy levels with electrons is same as filling of k space with electrons. During the filling, Pauli's exclusion principle must be obeyed. That means we cannot put more than two electrons per energy level or uh, per k point. Filled portion of the k space is a sphere of radius kf and this is known as the Fermi sphere. Kf is known as the Fermi wave vector and this is related to an experimentally measurable quantity that is the electron density. Electron density n is equals to Kfq divided by 3 pi square. We also found that quantum free electrons at 0 Kelvin have 100 times more kinetic energy than classical free electrons at 300 Kelvin and this happens because of the Pauli's exclusion principle. Let us calculate some thermodynamic properties at ground state. Say we know some property as a function of k and we have a smooth function of k. For example, energy is equals to h cross square k square divided by 2m is a smooth function of k. Now we want to calculate the total energy of the system. Now, this is the Fermi sphere with radius kf and the value of kf is given to us. To calculate the total energy, we have to add up the energies of all the k states lying inside the Fermi sphere. For example, we know that all the states, these are lying inside the Fermi sphere. So, we have to add the energy of all the states inside the Fermi sphere and then we can get the total energy. So, we have to calculate this sum. Let us convince ourselves that the sum can be converted to an integral under certain condition. So, we have to calculate this sum okay, for all the allowed values of k. Now, we can take this, so sum over k, f of k. We want to calculate the sum. So what we do is that we just divide and multiply it with the value of delta k, where delta k is 8 pi cube by v. And then what we do is we just write it as v by 8 pi cube sum over k f of k delta k correct so this is what is given here now we use some limit v goes to infinity then you see that the 
these boxes right they become so delta k becomes very small so each of these boxes right it will become very small as v goes to infinity okay and then this discrete k points they will become almost continuous and that is why in this limit we can convert this sum to an integral so what we do is that in this equation correct bring v to the left hand side right so that means this left hand side will become 1 by v sum over k less than kf f of k okay and then the right hand side we have 1 by 8 pi q so we have this term and we have delta k is now we just write it as dk and then we have this function f of k and then as i said that this discrete space uh, all becomes almost continuous in the limit delta v going to infinity or delta k going to zero so that means we just we can do this calculate this integral let us derive total number of electrons using the above method we have to find out how many states are there within the fermi sphere and then we have to multiply with two as there are two electrons per state according to the pauli's exclusion principle that will give us the total number of electrons in the system in this case the function the smooth function z of k this is equal to 1 and then we write the volume element in the k space dk as uh, 4 pi k square dk we can write it in this form because we have spherical symmetry now let us calculate this right so total number of electrons n this will be equal to sum over k is equals to 0 to kf f of k now we multiply with 2 because of pauli's exclusion principle so this is this sum will give you the total number of states within the fermi sphere and then we have to multiply with 2 because each state can have two electrons and now we divide it by volume such that n by v is equal to 2 by v sum over k equal to 0 to k f f of k and i know that 1 by v sum over k less than k f f of k this is given by this integral correct so that means n by v can be written in this form correct so i just replace this sum with the integral integral dk by 8 by q and then i know that this f of k is equals to 1 and then in place of dk i just replace 4 pi k square dk so this is the integral that we have to evaluate and this is uh, not so difficult to evaluate so if we just uh, do this so this is like 1 over pi square integral 0 to f k square dk and in that case we see that n by v is equals to kf q divided by 3 pi square let us derive total energy of the electron gas again the fermi sphere is given to us the radius of fermi sphere so what we have to do is that we have to find all the states lying within this fermi sphere and then we have to add the energy of every state to get the total energy so that means we have to calculate this sum 
and then we have f of k, the function that we have to integrate is h plus square a square divided by 2m. Note that this factor 2, this accounts for the Pauli's exclusion principle. That means we have two electrons per state. Now, let us calculate this. So, we know that the sum can be converted to some integral of this form. And uh, then we also know that this is what? This is equal to E, correct? So, this is where we are just adding uh, the energies of uh, uh, all the states. So, this will give me E. So, that means this term in the left hand side that is equal to E by B. And then we have this factor of 2, which accounts for the Pauli's exclusion principle. And in the right hand side, we have this integral. And uh, then we know that uh, dk is equals to 4 pi squared. Uh, so 4 pi k squared dk. And this is because of the spherical symmetry. And then we have this function f of k is equals to h plus square k squared by 2m. So we have to calculate this integral. And then this integral will be equal to 1 by pi square h cross square by 2m. So these are the constant terms. And this is like integral 0 to kf k to the power 4 d. And then we can just write it as h cross square kf to the power 5 divided by 10 pi square m. So now what we know is, we know that n by b is equals to kf cube divided by 3 pi square. And, uh, and we know that this term is equals to e by b. Correct. E by B is equals to this term. So that means we can also write this ratio of E by B and N by B. And that will turn out to be 3 fifth of H cross square KF square divided by 2M. And then we know that this H cross square KF square by 2M, this is equal to EF square, right? The Fermi energy square, 3 fifth of EF. And then uh, EF, we can convert it to some uh, temperature scale. We can just write EF is equals to Boltzmann constant KB times PF, where PF is the some temperature scale. Now, we can compare this with classical, uh, the, the energy of the classical electron gas, and that turns out to be 3 by 2 times KBT. Whereas, this is of the order of 10 power 4 Kelvin and the room temperature T, this is of the order of 300 Kelvin. Thus, we again see that the quantum free electron gas has almost 100 times more energy than the classical free electron gas. We already have calculated the internal energy of free electron gas. Let us calculate few more thermodynamic properties. Combining first and second law of thermodynamics, we can write dE. So this is the E is the internal energy equal to T dS. T is the temperature. S is the entropy minus P dV. P is pressure. V is volume plus mu dN. Mu is chemical potential and N is the total number of particles. Now, if we take this equation, then we can calculate the pressure exerted by the free electron gas at T equal to 0 Kelvin. So, by calculating this partial derivative del E del V at constant N and S that is equal to pressure. Let us calculate this term. So, we already know that E is equals to 
three fifth of n ef right where n is the total number of particles total number of electrons and ef is the fermi energy now we know that the fermi energy can further be written as three fifth n and the fermi energy is h cross square kf square divided by 12. now we also know that kf is equals to 3 pi square n divided by v whole power 1 by 3. So that means this term k f square, we can just write it like this. Now let us replace k f square in this equation. Then E is equals to 3 n h cross square divided by 10 m and now i replace k f square so this is like 3 pi square n whole power 2 by 3 divided by v power 2 by 3 and then essentially this is some constant times v power minus 2 by 3. So thus, energy increases as v decreases, right? So energy is proportional to v power minus 2 by 3. Now, we can take log of this equation and then we can write log of e is equal to log of c minus two-third log of v. And then we calculate this derivative. Okay. Del, we calculate the partial derivative del log b divided by del b is equals to minus two-third into one by v. So, this implies that we can further write del e by del b is equals to minus two-third e by b. So, this is what we have. And then we can further write this term like this. Since energy goes as v power minus 2 by 3, then from this equation, right, from this equation, we can see, write that, or we can uh, find out that pressure goes as v power minus 5 by 3. So, pressure increases as volume decreases. Thus, as one tries to compress a metal, free electron pressure is going to resist. The resistance to compression is known as the bulk modulus. It is defined as the ratio of infinitesimal pressure increase due to the decrease of volume. Let us calculate this term. So again, we take log such that we can write log of T is equals to so we are just uh, uh, taking log of this equation, correct? Right? So log of t is equals to log of some constant minus five by three log of b. And again, we calculate the derivative. Which is equal to minus five by three. 1 by 2. And then we can write it in this form del p del v is equal to minus 5 by 3 t by v. Thus, we can write bulk modulus b is equal to minus v 
So minus B will cancel this B. And then del B, del B. So it is like uh, 5 by 3 of P, right? So that means bulk modulus will be 5 by 3 times P. And then we can further express it uh, in terms of uh, energy as well as Fermi energy. So that means you see the bulk modulus can be expressed in terms of the electron density as well as the Fermi energy. But now note that we already have estimated the value of N, the electron density and the value of the Fermi energy. Thus, we can compare the calculated value with the experimental value. In this column, we have the experimental values of bulk modulus for different metals. And then in this column, we have the values calculated from free electron theory. So what we did is that we calculated the value of N, the electron density. We calculated the value of EF. And from that, we can find the value of the bulk modulus. And then you see that the values uh, for uh, certain alkali metals like uh, rubidium and cesium, the agreement is uh, really good. Uh, it's not so good uh, for, uh, say, like copper or uh, silver and so on. So what we can conclude from this? As we try to compress a metal, the pressure of free electron gas will resist. But this cannot be the only source of resistance to compression. So the mismatch that we find here is expected. But you see that the free electron gas uh, pressure is as important as other effects. Because if you at least look at the uh, order of magnitude, so these numbers, they are of the same order of magnitude. So that leads to the conclusion that the free electron gas, gas pressure is as important as other effects. Before we go further, let us review what we have done so far. So we have found that thermodynamic variables like the total number of electrons or the energy of the electrons can be calculated from this sum. And this sum needs to be calculated up to the Fermi sphere. Now, f of k depends on what we want to calculate. For example, f of k is equals to 1 if we want to calculate the total number of electrons. f of k is h cross square k square by 2m if we want to calculate the total energy and so on. Now, note that this is not an easy sum to calculate because the number of electrons that we have in the system is huge. It is of the order of 10 power 23. Analytical calculation, it uh, becomes simpler if we convert the sum to the integral. And then this is how the sum can be written as an integral. And this conversion is correct in the limit delta k. Uh, dk goes to 0 or in the that means in the limit b is going to infinity. So that means, so this is like delta k, right? The point occupied or uh, the volume occupied by one point, right? So uh, we see that as b goes to 0, right? Uh, the So delta k is equals to 8 pi q by b. So as b goes to infinity, the volume occupied by each point uh, th this will uh, go to almost zero. So that means uh, the discrete space now can be uh, looked at as some almost continuous space. And then we can convert the sum to this integral. And then we can write it in this form. And we have used this to evaluate the total number of electrons as well as the total energy of the electrons. Let me summarize some of the thermodynamic properties of free electron gas at ground state. The beauty of free electron gas model is its simplicity. We need only one parameter n, the electron density, and from that we can calculate Kf, the Fermi wave vector, 
and from fermi wave vector we can calculate ef the fermi energy and once we have this uh, n and ef we can express all the thermodynamic properties for example energy per unit volume this is given by and uh, three fifth n times ef energy per electron this is given by three fifth ef uh, pressure is uh, given by two fifth n times ef bulk modulus is given by two third n times ef now although we are using both n and ef actually we have only one independent variable n because ef is related to n by this equation so now if you look at this table once we have found the value of n we can find the value of ef and from that uh, we can calculate all the ground state properties listed in this table among all the properties we can actually compare with experimental result in case of bulk modulus and then we already have uh, seen that the theoretically predicted and experimentally uh, measured value of bulk modulus for some, most of the metals the order of magnitude matches this provides us some kind of validation of quantum free electron gas model